Coming up on Doctype, I'll show you how to improve your print style sheets, you know, by having them. Then, Jim will show you how to speed up your webpage with head.js. So try not to shed a tear, it's the last episode of the year. It's time for Doctype. This episode of Doctype is brought to you by GoDaddy. I'm Nick Pettit. And I'm Jim Hoskins. And you're watching Doctype. Whether you're a designer that thinks JavaScript is a decaf latte, or you're a developer who can't tell your margin from your padding, Doctype has the latest tips, tricks, and tools to help make you the emperor of the interwebs. Heck yeah. So, last week, not to be outdone by Apple, Google came out with the Chrome Web Store, which is a place where you can get web apps, and you can also get extensions for Chrome and themes for Chrome. It's a pretty neat idea. I think it's going to do a lot to sort of enhance web app discoverability. I think it's one of the things that's been lacking. Hopefully, the you know Chrome Web Store will do that. You know, they also have paid apps, which will be good for people trying to monetize. So it's going to be pretty big. They're not gonna, they're not the only store that's going to be around. There's others coming out from other people too. So it's interesting seeing this sort of app store market being you know, play it out on the web. Definitely. And you can check it out at chrome.google.com slash web store. So we also have just a quick little announcement about the show, or not really an announcement. Uh, <laughs> we are going to be taking a quick break, and we will be back at the beginning of next year. Yep, we'll be back in January. You got to take some time off to go see the family for the holidays. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next year. Definitely. And that's it. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. I'm going to be talking about print style sheets. And I'll show you how to use head.js to make your websites load a little bit faster. Let's check it out. People print out websites a lot more often than you might think, whether it's for concert tickets or boarding passes. And I know a lot of us geeks like to use e-readers when we're reading stuff offline, but there's still a lot of people that like to print stuff out. And with the recent introduction of printing to Apple's line of iOS devices, I thought it might be a good time to talk about print style sheets. So let's dive in. Now, just in case you can't remember how to set up a print style sheet, here's the code that you'll need. The important part is to make sure that you set the media attribute to print rather than screen. That way, the browser will know that it should apply this style sheet when printing. And while we're on the subject of code, a great way to make sure your print style sheet is heading in the right direction is to look at your website without CSS. This isn't 100% foolproof, but semantic markup is the foundation of a great print style sheet. Let's start off by looking at what I think is one of the best print style sheets on the web. This is the blog, 24 Ways, which you can find at 24ways.org. And I'd like you to notice the complexity of the background in this design. There are many layers of transparency, texture, and color. However, when it's printed, here's what you end up seeing. The background has been reset to white and removed entirely so that you can focus on the content. The larger point I'd like to make here is that your website shouldn't look like a full color magazine when it's printed. If people really want to print an exact image of what your website looks like when it's on screen, they can always take a screenshot and just print it out. Now, let's look at a bad example. This is an article from money.cnn.com, a part of the CNN News organization. This design is just okay, but let's see what happens when we try to print. Incredibly, it looks almost exactly the same. All the ads are still at the top and on the right, the navigation is still there, and even images that aren't a part of the article are still being printed. Not only is this wasteful, it's annoying to someone that just wants to print this out for the article. So if we go back to the original site, you can see how similar it actually is. There's hardly any differences between the screen and print version. People that print out news articles for offline reading aren't going to be clicking on ads, linked images, or items in the navigation, so it's best to exclude them. The idea here is to try and simplify your website as much as you can when it's being printed. Another great example of print style sheets comes from the blog A List Apart. Their articles are typically much more wordy than your average blog post, so let's see what it looks like when they're printed. There are three things I'd like you to notice here. First, they've set the font size to something that's very readable on a piece of paper. 
People have a lot of different opinions on how to set the font size in a print style sheet, but I'm going to recommend that you set it to 12 points, which is the de facto default in print. Zooming in a bit, the next thing I'd like you to notice is that this page, much like the printed article from 24 Ways, is designed. Just because you're printing something and simplifying your design doesn't mean that you have to abandon design altogether. There are still some nice things that you can do with typography, horizontal rules, fonts, and so on. Zooming in even more, there's one last thing I'd like to point out. Notice how when text is linked, the full URL is printed in parentheses right after the text. This is important because if you didn't include the URL, there would be no way to figure out what this link points to when it gets printed. Now, people don't always print websites, but when they do, it's important to provide them with a really good experience. Listen, you need a domain name. You know it, I know it, but where are you gonna go get it? GoDaddy, that's where. If you're looking to drive viewers to your video content, then .tv domains are where it's at. .tv domains are perfect for podcasters, video bloggers, and anyone with something to say. And they're available now at GoDaddy.com. Heck, where do you think we got Doctype.tv from? So we know you all get your domains from GoDaddy, but whose code are you gonna use? Enter the code Doctype3 when you check out and save an additional 10% off your entire order. Some restrictions apply see site for details get your piece of the internet at godaddy.com loading scripts on your web page can be a time-consuming operation by using head.js you can reduce the amount of time from page load to the time where your user can interact with your content head.js got its name because it's supposed to be the only external script tag that you have in your document's head the problem with loading up script tags in your head is that each time you have a script tag the page goes out, fetches the JavaScript, and executes it before it can download the next script where it has to go fetch it and execute it. So it has to do it one by one. And by doing this sequentially, it's very slow. Each file has to be loaded in and executed before the next one can happen. And all this needs to happen before your page content can be shown to your user. Now, one way around this is to put your script files in the bottom of your page so you can view your content before the JavaScript loads in for the behavior and stuff. Head.js has sort of the same approach, except it introduces a loader that allows you to load your JavaScript files in parallel using a different mechanism. So let's take a look at what the code looks like. Now, this is going to be in the head of your page. And the first thing we're going to do is include the head.js file itself. Now, this is a pretty small file, so it shouldn't take very long. And it's the only script that's actually going to slow down your page from loading, but it's very small. After that, when you want to include files, you use a special head.js method and pass it the path of the JS file. Now this JavaScript file will be loaded in asynchronously so it won't block your page from being viewed. And if you pass in multiple scripts, they'll all be loaded in parallel. But if you pass them as arguments, they'll be executed one after the other. So you don't have to worry about race conditions about which JavaScript file arrives first. Now you can also pass in a function to the head.js and this function will be executed after all of the scripts that were defined before it have been loaded and executed in order. Now alternatively, you can make multiple head.js calls and pass your JavaScript file names and they'll be loaded in, in parallel, but they'll be executed in whatever order they arrive in. So if you don't have any dependencies, you can use multiple head.js calls. Now in this particular example, you probably wouldn't want to do that because if something in app.js relies on jQuery, if app loads first, it's going to fail. But in the situations where you don't have those dependencies, this can also work for you. Now, because the JavaScript files are loaded and executed after the page has loaded, this can cause some problems if you want to use inline script tags, because those inline script tags will be executed before your actual external scripts are available. So you couldn't do things like use jQuery inside of them, because jQuery wouldn't have been loaded by the time that inline script tag executes. So the way we handle that is we use the head.ready method, which takes a function. That function will be delayed until after all of your scripts have been loaded in, and then it's safe to use. So for instance, if we did head.ready here, if we had loaded in jQuery with head.js, by the time this function is called from head.ready, it will now have jQuery loaded in the page, and it's safe to use. Now this function will actually be executed after the document.ready event, so your whole page is ready to use and this can replace things like jQuery's document.ready function. So besides the loader, which can decrease your load times, it also comes with a few extras. One, it includes an HTML5 shiv, and this is like Google's HTML5 shiv, which is a piece of JavaScript that creates the HTML5 elements, 
which is basically a hack that allows you to use the new HTML5 semantic elements in Internet Explorer and still be able to style them. So if you use the head.js, you can eliminate having to call that extra file. It also provides a CSS modernizer, or as I like to call it, modernizer with an R, light. It sort of does the same things that modernizer does, where it detects features and adds certain classes to your HTML element. So you can use CSS to style based on what features are available in the browser. Now, if you're looking for the full feature, you may just want to load up the full modernizer script by using head.js, but it's a nice little feature. It also has a screen size detector, which adds classes to your HTML element that will trigger based on the size of the screen. So in this case, the class LT640 means that for now the screen is less than 640 wide, and so on and so forth. Now this also could be handled by using CSS media queries, which are gonna be more full featured, but of course CSS media queries will not work in Internet Explorer, so you may or may not wanna use that. It also provides some browser detection, so it'll add classes based on the browser. Now this might work for you for some CSS hacks, but there are other methods that are probably a little bit better for you to use. So if you just want the loader, they actually provide a head.loader.min.js. So this is only going to include the loader stuff that will make your page load faster. Now if you want loader plus the extras, you can use the normal head.min.js. It's really up to you what you want to use. If you just want the faster loading, just use the head.loader. Otherwise, use head.js. That is it for this week. Until next time, be sure to check us out at facebook.com slash doctype and follow at doctype TV on Twitter. And if you have a question you'd like answered on a future episode of Doctype, send us an email at questions at doctype.tv. And if you subscribe via iTunes or RSS or YouTube, you'll never miss an episode of Doctype. So why not? So until next time, remember that every great web page starts with Doctype.